Hello everyone, I'm Emmanuel Malherbe, Director of Research at Artefact, and today I have a discussion with Alexandra to discuss about mixed marketing modeling. Hi Alexandra, who are you? Hi Emmanuel, thank you for having me here, very excited. I'm a Director of Data in Artefact, and I have started my career in France and I continued it in the UK. That's amazing, and I heard you are an expert of MMM, Mixed Marketing Modeling, what is it exactly? Yeah, thank you for the question. Indeed, for the last three years, we have been working a lot on the MMM topic. Namely, we are building models to help businesses and our clients understand the ROI of their media, promo, um, and other types of anything that is growing the revenue type of investment. We have developed multiple models. We tried uh, things as simple as regression and we went as sophisticated as Bayesian networks. So I'm really eager to share the experience today. Wow, it sounds quite exciting and quite complicated. Um, what are the different trends do you see with your clients right now? We see three main trends uh, with our clients, uh, more or less all around the world. The first one would be the in-housing of the solution, the internalization of this measurement capability of the code itself. Second one is brands and clients desire to receive fast results. Brands do want to iterate frequently on their measurement and they do want to understand direct response from their activities here and now. And the third trend, I would say, it's more about introducing this end-to-end -end approach when imagine as a client on one hand side, you're going to have teams that will take strategic decisions for the business. And on the other hand, you will have the operational teams who are going to be working on the ground and receiving this, this fresh signal of the business. And we see a lot of desire and challenges associated with it to connect the two and to make it an end-to-end -end process without losing information, without losing the insights. Extremely clear. And on the first part, the internal approach, what is Artifact uh, solution for that? Yeah, I think it might look a little bit counterintuitive that a consulting company internalization of the capability what is what is the link actually what we do with the clients we are um, coming to their organizations and we help them build this capability within the company because a lot of our clients have the desire but they need some help to, to do this first step towards internalization of the MMM. What we would do, we would come, uh, start working with business teams to figure out what is the real learning agenda, what do the clients want to learn about their marketing or sales activities. That would be a step one. And a step two, we've developed our own model that we're going to um, put on uh, different platforms and make it model as a service available for our clients. We invite our tech teams and we work hand in hand with our client to implement our IP and also to bring their technical teams up to speed. Normally that's the end. And uh, we then leave our clients to, to continue their, their journey with the MMM on their own, or if they would like to get some extra support, we provide it as well. That's our philosophy. It makes a lot of sense. And on the second trend, uh, what would you see as a, the best solution? Yeah, on getting the fast results, what we have seen in the business is that there are two main types of capabilities that the client desire. The first one is more pragmatic and it's more designed to get the, the quick results and to really iterate fast with the available data. And then there usually follows an extension of the first, which is the AI innovative solutions, like I mentioned before that we have with the Bayesian network, or that we also incorporate with the Gen AI to increase efficiencies of the teams. Um, in order for us to really get to this first ROI quickly, we've built the way of working with the clients so that we start with implementing the first pragmatic approach in the beginning, so that we already enable the teams with these fast insights, and then we continue iterating. And here, the in-housing really helps because this way we have really quick access to all of the tech stack, we have quick access to the data, and we can do this link between model updating, between updating the results, and between implementing them in the business really fast. 
This way our clients get fast results, they still have their in-house capability and we have the time, capacity, staffing and budget to implement a great innovative things that are available now to us with GenAI. Well, it sounds quite efficient and on the whole cycle of the mixed marketing modeling. And what about the end-to-end -end challenge that you mentioned? What we're trying to do now is we're trying to save the time on figuring out what is the best model to use because we've tried it just so many times. We know more or less which approaches work. So within your regular project timeline, in order to connect the strategy and the operations, we need time to do this. We need to talk to people, we need to align the global learning agenda with the local learning agenda in and, and one way or another. So what we're doing is because we already solved the technical question and the know-how of the model, we do this implementation really quickly and the rest of the time we spend with the business to make sure that the results that our MMM is going to give is aligned with other studies that the client has done either with A-B tests or with other MMMs and we're really doing this link and uniting all of the insights together. It is more of an analytical and consulting job rather than a job of inviting a lot of data scientists and creating the AI from scratch. That's our main value proposition here. Excellent, that's uh, very clear. Now do you have a concrete example of uh, impact you had with your marketing mix modeling. I will give you an example from connecting the operational and the strategic departments and decision making in the company. We had a client, I'm not going to, uh, to disclose the name of the client if you let me. We had a situation where the client was already far um, progressing on their journey of measurement. And so far they have done a lot of studies. They have done A-B testing, they have done a couple of MMMs, so marketing mix models, on the global level as a group. They have done it on the local levels as well. And another person within the organization invited us, Artifact, to do a study on a little bit different scope. When we've arrived to the organization, what we've discovered was that within scopes almost the same or scopes next to it, there have been historically done a lot of studies and we found a lot of values of reusing all of these insights because some of them were really strategic, you know, setting the path of the company. And another one was very operational from A-B tests, trying a lot of different innovations. And we wanted really to connect these insights together to present a holistic picture to the business that was not done before. And because our model and because our approach to marketing mix modeling is based on Bayesian methods, these are the methods that are really learning from the business context of the client, we were able to do that. And the first value add of our model was, yeah, here's the ROI of this, here's the ROI of that. But the second value add was really unifying the whole business value chain from operations to strategy using AI. Wow, so you've, with your model, united the business insight, but also united the teams and the people. That's an excellent story. Exactly. And sometimes you can have challenges because, you know, there are different teams doing the measurement and sometimes doing the A-B testing and then also bringing it into the business. We were able to create a story which was shared by, by everyone and it really helped speed up business operations without having to solve the small inconsistencies here and there. Now when you have a holistic view where you can combine all of your insights that you've, that you've achieved over the last couple of years, it really solves the operational communication. Thank you, Alexandra. It was an amazing example of AI connecting people. Uh, do you have a last word about the future of mixed marketing modeling? I, we don't know the future for sure, but I can tell you one thing. Marketing mixed modeling is there to stay. Companies do pay a lot of attention at seeing the result of their actions. We see it in the marketing mix modeling, but we also see companies doing a lot of initiatives and reorganizing their data lakes, the way the data is consumed inside the organization, paying a lot of attention to data governance. I feel the future is in the efficiency there. I feel marketing mix modeling will have to become faster, more rigorous, 
simpler to explain to the business stakeholders, easier accessible to, to business analysts. And here is where the Gen AI comes in when the clients can really uh, query the results of MMM and build reports by themselves without necessarily having a lot of technical skills. So definitely marketing mix modeling is there to stay and is there to, uh, to evolve, to become more efficient and easily acceptable, accessible. Thanks a lot, Alexandra, for your insight. It was extremely clear, extremely promising for the future of marketing mix modeling. And thanks a lot for your attention.